Today, I'm going to share with you six Photoshop preferences that are going to help you work faster and more efficiently in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And in today's episode, I'm going to share with you six of my personal favorite Photoshop preferences and settings that are going to help you work a lot faster and more efficiently in Photoshop. Now, a lot of this is the stuff that has to do with like behind the scenes, how it's actually like working, but we're going to show you some keyboard shortcuts and some options that are going to help you get the most out of Photoshop. All right, guys, we had a great episode. Let's go ahead and jump in. Tip number one is add more history states. This will allow you to undo further back into the past. So if you've ever been limited on the amount of undos that you can do, well, we're going to show you how to increase that. So here in Photoshop, let's go ahead and create a layer. And maybe on this layer, we'll just you know paint with white. And I'll paint right over top of our subject's eyes and change it to something like soft light. OK, now if I want to undo this, just add a little bit of light there. OK, now if I want to undo this, I can go to Window and down to History. There we go. And you're going to see here I've got some undo. OK, so I can go back and change my opacity and change my brush tool and even go back to a new layer. Now, a lot of the time you're going to have, uh, you're basically going to run out of undo states. And if you want to go back more in time, here's how you do it. Simply go to Photoshop and down to Preferences. And then we're going to go to your performance. OK, so here in performance, you're going to see your history states here on the right hand side. And this is actually your undo state. So uh, by default, it should be between 20 and 30. But you can increase this number you know, all the way to 1,000. So if you can go 1,000 steps back in time. Now, my recommendation would be to keep this you know, anywhere from 50 to 100, depending on your, uh, how far you'd like to undo. But the thing to keep in mind here is that the more history states that you have, uh, it's basically storing that information on your computer temporarily. So if you increase your history states and you don't have a very fast computer, this could slow your computer down a little bit. So I would find the number that you're comfortable with, but around 100 should be more than enough. So there we go. Let's hit 100 and hit OK. There we go. Adding more history states. Tip number two is use quick export to get your images on the web. So let's say you've edited your image to perfection. You're ready to get it out on the internet. And the fastest way to do this is through quick export. So let's go ahead and set that up. We're going to go to Photoshop, over to Preferences, and down to Export. There we are. Now, here we're going to see our quick export format. And you can change it different formats from JPEGs to GIFs, SVGs, and PNGs. Now, most of the time, if you are going to have transparency, then you're going to want your quick export format to be PNG, which will support transparency. But if you don't need transparency, I highly suggest using JPEG. OK, so JPEG quality anywhere between 80 and 100. 100 quality is going to look great. 80, a quality of 80 will usually look just as good as a quality of 100, but it'll take up less space. So we're going to keep our quality at 80. Now, I can have it say, ask where to export each time. And this way, you can choose the folder where it's going to export. OK, metadata, I suggest having copyright and your contact info. And then this is really important here at the bottom, convert to sRGB. That's the color space that most web browsers use to read images. So if you've ever had a problem uh, with web browsers not showing the correct colors, it's probably because you weren't in sRGB color space. So we do want to make sure that is checked. So those are our settings, quick export format. OK, now how do we get this out on the internet? Again, it's really easy to do. Just go to File, down to Export, and over to Quick Export as JPEG. And it's going to load all those settings. We just do this and hit, let's just name this Adobe Stock underscore 2, and hit Enter. And then our settings are automatically exported out. So that is, here we go. And you can see it went ahead and opened it in Finder. So that is the fastest way to get your images out on the internet. OK, so tip number two is use quick export to get your images on the internet. Tip number three is going to speed up Photoshop. I'm going to show you how to let Photoshop use more of the RAM that's on your computer, leading to a faster experience. 
So Photoshop seems to be running a little bit slow. My suggestion is to close out all of your other applications. Photoshop uses a lot of RAM, and RAM is the biggest thing that's going to make Photoshop run faster. So let's go ahead and show you how to get more RAM allocated to Photoshop. We're going to go to our Photoshop preferences and over here to performance. There we go. Now here in your performance, you have a lot of options, but on the top left, we want to choose the amount of RAM that Photoshop is allowed to use. Now, the lower your settings here, basically you're reserving more RAM for other applications. Now, my suggestion when I work in Photoshop, I prefer to have my RAM allocation right up anywhere between like 80 and 90% of my computer's available RAM resources. And then I just close out all my other programs. So while I'm working in Photoshop, I'm letting it use a ton of my RAM and it's gonna help Photoshop run quickly. And then I'll just go ahead and close this out and use my other programs. So this is going to depend on the available RAM that you have on your computer. Let's go ahead and check out what's on my computer. I'm going to go to my Apple here and about this Mac. There we go. And I've got 32 gigs of RAM on this computer, which is quite a bit. It's going to help Photoshop run quickly. So if you're interested in letting Photoshop run a bit more quickly, I would suggest to add more RAM to your computer if possible. And then here in Photoshop, let Photoshop use more of it. So hit OK, and there we go. Speeding up Photoshop by letting it use more RAM. Tip number four is to use scratch disks to increase performance in Photoshop. Now, Photoshop initially will use the available RAM that it has at its disposal. But if it starts running low on those resources, you can set another scratch disk, and it will use that in place of RAM. Let's go ahead and show you how to set that up. To set up a scratch disk, we're going to go to our Photoshop, over to Preferences and down to Scratch Disks. There we are. Now, I would suggest having an external drive set up as your scratch disk. You don't really want your internal hard drive set up as a scratch disk. This is not going to be fast. The fastest options are to get like a USB 3.0 or a Thunderbolt solid state hard drive, something that's going to go very quickly, and then just keep that external as your scratch disk. In this case, I've got a multiple, I've got a Thunderbolt RAID array set up as my scratch disk with that much free space going. So when Photoshop uses all of my allocated RAM, it's going to start storing temporary information onto this drive. So use the fastest possible drive you can. If you've got a couple drives in your computer, maybe use the drive that your operating system is not installed on. So you just want to make sure to, if you don't have anything checked up here, Make sure you check at least one, and then you can change the order. For instance, you could have multiple scratch disks set up. And for this one, again, I suggest having a drive that is not your internal hard drive with your operating system. That'll make sure it's going to go faster. So there we go. Set up your scratch disks, and it will increase Photoshop performance. Tip number five is set up and use the correct color space to allow Photoshop to use more colors. Now, some color spaces are really large. They include a lot of colors, and that's what you want to edit in. Other color spaces are much smaller. They include less colors, and that's what you use when it's time to export out to the internet. So let's jump in. I'll show you how to set that up. To set up your color space, go to Edit and down to Color Settings. Here on the top left, you're going to see your working space. That's what Photoshop is actually set up here. Now, the only thing you really need to worry about here is this RGB. And you want to make sure when you click here, these are going to be your standards up at the top. Now, you may have seen sRGB. We actually talked about that earlier. This is great for exporting images out to the web. OK, Adobe RGB 1998 is also a great color space. And Profoto RGB is the largest color space. So let's go ahead and click on these. And we'll just show you there's a little description here in the box. So sRGB. Now, as I hover over sRGB, you can read just right down here. OK reflects the characteristics of the average CRT display. OK, so this is a great color space for working on the web. It says right there, ideal space for web work, but not recommended for pre-passed work because it's a limited color gamut. So when you're exporting out, be sure to export out as sRGB. And you can do that with the quick export settings that we just showed you how to do. Now, the next largest color space is going to be Adobe RGB 1998. So you can read the description there. But the largest color space available is Profoto RGB. OK, it says at the bottom, provides a very large RGB gamut. OK, this is the largest color space, and this is perfect for editing. So I recommend keeping Adobe, keeping Photoshop set to Profoto RGB. And these options down at the here, down at the bottom, 
ask when opening, ask when pasting, and missing profiles, ask when opening. This is, if you try to open an sRGB document, for instance, let's just hit cancel there. I'm going to just close this down real quick and try opening it again. Now, this image I got from Adobe Stock. Okay, so this is an Adobe Stock image. I'm going to hit open, and what it's going to tell me is it has an embedded color profile that does not match the current working RGB color space. And that's because I had those boxes checked that said, hey, warn me if I'm going to get a profile mismatch. So you can see the embedded profile is sRGB, okay, which is perfect for the web. But my working profile is set to ProPhoto RGB, the largest color space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say convert the document colors to the working space and hit OK. And there we go. You always want to make sure to convert. OK, so again, in summary, just go to Edit, down to your color settings. You want to edit in ProPhoto RGB whenever possible. OK, and when it comes time to export, you can use your quick export to ex export to the web at sRGB and make sure all these are checked as well. OK, cool. So that'll help you get working with the correct color space in Photoshop. Tip number six is learn and use keyboard shortcuts. And I've got an easy way for you guys to do this. So jumping into Photoshop, we're going to go to Edit. And I'm going to go down here to Keyboard Shortcuts. There we go. Now, if I click on, let's say I open up my File menu, you're going to see everything that's in my menus here and the corresponding keyboard shortcut that's right next to it. So for instance, if I want to create a new document, I can hit Control or Command N, and that'll create a new document. So let's hit, a, hit Cancel here. I'm going to hit Control or Command N, and there we go, new document. So it's a very quick way of working in Photoshop. Now let's go again to our keyboard shortcuts. If you'd like to create your own keyboard shortcut, OK, let's say you'd like to create a keyboard shortcut. I want to change the new document keyboard shortcut. I'll just double click here, and then I'll say Control or Command B. That's, I don't know why we would want to do that, but you can change it if you want to, Control or Command B. And it's going to say you, say Control or Command B is already used and will be removed from image adjustment color balance if accepted. So you can hit accept and then it will remove the keyboard shortcut from color balance, or you can hit undo ch changes and it will go back to Control or Command. And now, my suggestion here when using your keyboard shortcut is click on this Summarize button here on the right-hand side. So if I click on Summarize, it's going to spit out Photoshop defaults.htm. Let's go ahead and hit Save there. OK, it's going to go ahead and spit that out. And now I have a list of keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop. And this is an updated list. So if you change any of these keyboard shortcuts, they will be updated on this list. So you can print this out and have a little guidebook for you of the keyboard shortcuts that you most commonly use. So the fastest way to work in Photoshop is through using keyboard shortcuts. So I would definitely print this out, take a look, maybe use a highlighter at those the keyboard shortcuts of things that you're actually going to do quite often, like create a new document. Go ahead and put those to memory, and it's going to help you work faster in Photoshop. All right, guys, and those are our six tips to help you work faster and more efficiently in Photoshop. Thanks so much for watching today's episode. I hope you learned a ton, and I hope it speeds up your workflow in Photoshop. If you love Photoshop as much as I do, go ahead and click on your screen right about now. We'll send you free episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode, or a question or comment about today's episode, simply leave it in the comment box right down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone. Undo's that you can do. Ba 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 da ba ba. Beep 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 boop. The last tip has to do with ba 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 da ba ba. <laughs> Which makes no sense at all. <laughs>